Cristiano Ronaldo removed two bottles of Coca-Cola during his press conference and replaced it with water. This was such a simple gesture, but it was a massive statement that went out to the world. The entire world praised Cristiano Ronaldo for making this positive move. Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to speak about the role of positive role models. Very recently, Cristiano Ronaldo removed two bottles of Coca-Cola during his press conference and replaced it with water. This was such a simple gesture, but it was a massive statement that went out to the world. The entire world praised Cristiano Ronaldo for making this positive move. The reason why the entire world went gaga over this move was very simple, that in a world where celebrities are endorsing really bad products like sugary drinks, alcohol, gutka, whatnot, Cristiano Ronaldo took a stand to come across as a positive role model not through his words but through his actions. This was a very powerful move which hopefully will inspire a lot of children, a lot of children who actually idolize people like Cristiano Ronaldo and it would help them inculcate good habits. Since I recently became a father and I have a one-year-old son Zane who one day would hopefully look up to me and I in a way would be a role model to him, this entire incident of Cristiano Ronaldo made me reflect as to how I have been living my life and what are some good habits that I still need to inculcate. So there are three very recent habits that I have been trying to inculcate. So I thought that I would share these three habits with you. What are these habits and why am I trying to inculcate it and how am I trying to inculcate this? So hopefully this will inspire you too in terms of picking up good habits and we all are micro celebrities in our own way. So it is important for all of us to display the type of positive candor that Cristiano Ronaldo has displayed because we too directly or indirectly inspire people around us. So the first key habit that I'm trying to inculcate is to read more and more books. Now, I'm someone who enjoys consuming a lot of information and consuming a lot of knowledge. But so far, I had been doing it through online forums like reading blogs, reading online books, reading digital books, etc. But now I'm actually picking up the habit of reading more and more physical books. To this end, I have actually started ABC, which is called as Akshat's Book Club. I'll link it down in the description. It's a free virtual book club. Now, the goal via this book club for me is very simple that I would want to help Everyone who is interested in reading more and more books, I'll give them clear deadlines, clear targets, clear reading list so that you end up reading approximately 35 to 40 books a year. So this is the target that I have for people who are just getting started with their reading habits and reading hobby. In my case specifically, I'm trying to read approximately 70 to 80 books in a year. So that brings out to one and a half book approximately a week. So you might say that, hey Akshat, that one and a half books per week looks like a very massive target. So how are you planning on accomplishing that? So here is what I'm trying to do. And here are some sub habits that I've cultivated that are actually helping me achieve this target. So number one, I don't read one book at a time. I actually read two or three books at least in one go. And I mix and match these books. For example, if I'm reading a simple book, for example, currently I'm reading these two books. So one is called a psychology of money and we will be discussing this on Akshat's book club. And this is a simple read for me. So it would not take me a lot of time to read this book, hardly like two or three days. And I'm also reading this complex book. It's called as meditation by Marcus Aurelius. Now this is about stoic philosophy. So this is slightly more philosophical. If you're just getting started, you don't need to pick up complicated books. You can only start with the simple books, but I would consider myself to be a slightly advanced reader. So in one go, I will pick up two to three books and I will keep on mixing and matching them throughout the day or throughout the week which I have dedicated to reading these books. The second key step that I incorporate in terms of increasing my reading ability is that I fix a time to read. For example, when I get up, I ensure that whenever I'm having my coffee, I would read the book simultaneously and I would dedicate somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes in the morning whenever I've gotten up to read that book on a continuous basis. The third sub habit that has improved my reading speed is that I've cut out distractions. For example, I have given up on my Netflix membership, not because I have some issues with Netflix, but I personally believe that I was spending a lot of time just browsing stuff, right? Rather than actually watching something on Netflix and getting something out of it, even entertainment, I was not getting any value of it. So I literally cut out Netflix completely. I still have Amazon Prime membership and I do watch shows sometimes, but I'm trying to build a life where I'm cutting out most of the distractions so that I can start focusing more on things that matter. For example, reading books. Now, fourth and final tip that I have for you in terms of improving your reading ability is that you must multitask and read. Now, this is a little bit counterintuitive. So please do more research on it. In my case, for example, if I'm having coffee, then I would start reading my book. If I am having lunch or dinner, 
and if I'm not with my family at that time, then I would start reading a book. So I utilize these little pocket of time to make good progress on my reading. So the second key habit that I'm trying to inculcate is called as curated minimalism. So let me quickly explain what minimalism means. So in simple terms, it simply means that you're more mindful of things that you're actually possessing. For example, if you're buying an iPhone, then really ask, do I want this or do I need this? If you need it, go ahead and buy, right? If you just simply want it because everyone else is wanting it, then there is no end to these wants, right? You might want a lot of things. So minimalism means that you're moving towards a stage where you don't need a bunch of stuff. So people take it to extreme sometimes and they end up giving majority of the things that they own. So I don't want to do that. So I'm trying to adopt my definition of minimalism, which I call it curated minimalism. So under this, what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to actually simplify my life. So let me explain this via a few examples. So number one, my wife and I don't own a house and we don't plan on owning a house. Not because we can't afford, we can, but actually owning a house brings a lot of challenges with it. Number one, if you own a house, then you have to pay house taxes, you have to undertake repair, you have to be cognizant of the security. It just roots you to a particular place. So it might be difficult for you to move. These are some lifestyle challenges which comes with owning a house. So this is the reason why we don't plan on owning a house, at least for a substantial future. We might do it someday, but at least for now, we don't see us owning a house. Second, we own a very basic car. So I own a i20. It's not as if that we can't buy more expensive cars, but my wife and I tend to see car as a commodity. So the job of a car is simply to take you from point A to point B. That is the reason why we have a decent comfortable car, i20, which works well, and we are very happy with it, and we don't plan on replacing it. Additional point is that car is a depreciating asset. So every year that you buy, the value of car goes down massively. For example, if you go and buy a new Mercedes, and if you just take it out of the showroom and try to sell it the next day, its value will come down by at least 20-25%. This is the reason why we don't own a house. We own a very basic car. I mostly wear decathlon clothes these days. So the t-shirt that you're seeing, it is from decathlon. The reason why I like to buy decathlon clothes is that it's inexpensive, quality is really good, comfort fit, and they are very easy to buy. So from that angle, I just end up buying decathlon clothes whenever I need something because I don't have to think a lot in terms of making these decisions. Because if I open some app to buy clothes, it will take up hours. But if I just go on decathlon, they have limited options. Just go and buy it from there. So it saves me a lot of time and the quality is really good. So these are simple decisions that I'm making in my life to adopt this curated minimalism. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is so that Zayn actually observes my actions that I'm taking. So Zayn actually observes my actions, not words, and implements this in his own life, right? So that is what I would want for him. My wife and I have often asked ourselves a question that, hey, would we want Zayn to value things or would we want him to value experiences? So our answer is always that you should value experiences. Let me demonstrate to you, right? So do try to answer this in the comment box that what are three best things in your life? Okay, what are three best things in your life? Now, I'm sure that majority of you would say mom, dad, my school experience, my college experience, the fact that I learned a new language, like things like that, right? But very few might say that hey, my iPhone is like my best thing in my life, right? It's, it, it's sad in a way, right? So the point I'm trying to tell you is that we as humans inherently value experiences over things to begin with. So that is the reason why my wife and I have been making conscious choice to get more and more experiences over things. For example, for Zayn, we have decided to hire a private Spanish tutor. I have spoken about it on my other videos also. Number two, before coronavirus, we actually took a trip. My wife and I took a trip to Hong Kong, right? And it was a good 11 day trip. And we ended up spending only around 1.3 lakhs. This included us going to Disneyland, taking cruises, going to Macau, bunch of different things. So the point that I'm trying to drive home is very simple, that curated minimalism does not mean that you stop enjoying stuff. You enjoy stuff, but you do it in a more mindful manner, right? So even when we went to Hong Kong, we lived very frugally, right? Similarly, we plan on living in Japan or Europe for a substantial period of time whenever the coronavirus ends. And again, we would try to do it very, very frugally. So that is what curated minimalism, according to me, means. This, according to me, simplifies your life. It allows you to focus on experiences rather than valuing yourself by the positions that you have. This is another key point that I'm trying to inculcate. Now, third and final thing that I'm trying to adopt more of is following my passion. Now it is a reality of life that one day I'll go away from this earth. This takes me to the question that how would I want Zane, my son, to remember me? Now the answer to that is very simple according to me that I would want him to remember me as someone who was very passionate about things that I did. So therefore following passion becomes my number one priority. 
So for me, that passion right now is teaching. So I love to teach. So I teach on a bunch of things. For example, I teach about management consulting on cases over coffee, seminars and webinars. I also go and speak at a lot of institutes. For example, in the last month itself, I have spoken at around eight institutes on cryptocurrencies. This includes major IITs like IIT Kharagpur. So I have been teaching. I want to pursue this passion. This is one of the key things that I have picked up in my life. But here is a very quick clarification because this might lead you to believe that you know what Akshat found some hidden gospel and he identified his passion and therefore he is doing it now. So here is my simple definition of passion that your passion evolves with age and time and situation. For example, when I was 8 or 9, I was very passionate about playing cricket. I in fact played cricket at a state level. So till the time I was 15, 16, I used to play cricket at a semi-professional level. I was playing in the state cricket team. So that was my passion. So I looked up to people like Rahul Travet, Sachin Tendulkar, etc. And their words created a lot of impact in my life. I used to diligently follow them. Now with age, my passion changed. So when I was in college, I started engaging more in music. So singing became one of my passion. So I started following people like Sonu Nigam, Kailash Khe, etc. So they became people whom I took inspiration from. So the point I want to drive home is very, very simple that your passion actually evolves with your interest, right? So if you're really stressed about finding out your passion, don't stress about it. Just see what you're interested in and try to do the best you can in terms of following that interest. So that is what passion according to me would be. So in summary, these are the three key habits that I'm trying to inculcate right now. Number one, reading more and more books. That is something that I am diligently spending my time on. So please join Akshat's book club. Check the description box and the comment section. I'll give out more information about it. But it's a great way for you to build your own reading habits. Number two, I am adopting curated minimalism. This is a move for me to make my life simple and indicate to Zane that he should value more experiences over stuff in his life. Third and finally, I am diligently trying to follow my passion and the things that I'll become passionate about or I am passionate about. Now, just in passing, I want to also cement two or three critical points here that while these are semi new habits that I've tried to cultivate, there are some things that have really helped me in my life, which I would want Zane to take away from me. Number one is the value of hard work. So be it playing cricket, be it following music, be it doing YouTube now. I have actually done it very, very diligently. Right? You might be seeing it and thanks for showering so much love first and foremost. So I think being hardworking is one of the key critical components irrespective of what you are doing. So that is extremely important for anyone. Second is that I can't tell you how valuable is it to be logically contrarian, right? I'm not saying that just go and be an anarchist and oppose everyone. No, but when you are seeing systemic faults, for example, I talk a lot about the education system, but I try to back it up with facts and figures, right? So that is called as logical contrarianism, right? So having a different viewpoint, it's completely okay, right? So you must adopt that and you should be okay with that, that hey, when you are outlining contrarian viewpoint, people are going to criticize and it's completely okay that is their viewpoint respect it but at the same time don't shy away from having your own logical contrarian viewpoints third and finally always live with the intent of living beyond yourself in the sense it could be as simple as just simply following your interest which inspires others right for example i'm picking up book reading habit and I'm trying to take people along with it so that I can create a community. I can create a structure and a system where other people also benefit. Similarly, if you're a college student who is very passionate about non-profit activities and volunteering activities, I too used to volunteer a lot of time with non-profits. So pursue that, right? Always figure out a way to assess how your work is impacting others. So these are some of the critical thoughts that I would leave you with. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed and please comment if you would want me to continue to make these type of personal videos. It would mean a lot to me. It would indicate to me that you value this type of content and I will see you on the next video.